Welcome back to another edition of Bearcat Chats and a pleasure to be joined by Erica Christ, who is the Senior Associate Director of Career Experiences and Education as part of the Fleischmann Center for Career and Professional Development. Erica, it's great to see you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, and of course, see you virtually, and that's a perfect segue into our discussion, which is you're used to seeing students, you know, in person, and especially in career development, that's such a personal thing to each student. Ever since the pandemic hit, how did the work in your office change? Yeah, so we quickly uh, transitioned our services, including our one-on-one, -on -one, you know, career consulting conversations, like you referenced, um, our programs and events, all to a virtual format. So within, I think, two days of the, the switch, the, the, the switch that flipped, uh, we were able to meet with students virtually one-on-one -on -one through Zoom. And I, I have to say, I was encouraged that so many students kind of took advantage of that opportunity. So we had um, many one-on-one -on -one conversations with students over this medium um, throughout the course of the spring semester and into the summer. So we're still meeting with students really regularly right now to have those conversations. Sometimes it's just a, let's share a screen and look at your resume together. Um, so we're able to kind of do that and other conversations obviously are more about searching for a job or an internship um, career exploration so we still have students thinking ahead right of like mm -hmm. what am I going to do with this degree from Binghamton and uh, what am I interested in and so we're still having a lot of those conversations one-on-one uh, -on -one with students and then like I mentioned a lot of our programs we were also able to transition to a virtual format um, so we still did workshops virtually on networking and interviewing resumes and CVs, all of those topics for undergrads and grads um, throughout the course of the spring. And, and they were well attended. And it also enabled us to uh, create some video content that now students can access at any time. So that little bit of a silver lining there too to that transition. And I wanna to get to some of the things that have changed possibly for the better. But first, you know, what's on everyone's mind, if you're a recent graduate, it's how do I get a job? You know, I have this degree, I've worked really hard at Binghamton, and for students that are rising seniors, juniors, et cetera, they're saying, how do I get that internship? What do you tell them? Yeah, I mean, I think our message has obviously changed over the course of the summer, especially as it relates to internships. Um, there was definitely, I think, a tough period in the spring where employers were trying to figure out what they were going to do in terms of internships, you know, transitioning their own opportunities to remote. And so what we saw is there was definitely a, a period where it was, it was rough to find things posted, but then once employers were able to transition those opportunities, we had more students reaching out um, about internships, interviews they were having mid-June, um, where typically would see that kind of activity in like April. In May. So the, the timeline shifted, I would say, for internships for sure. We have lots of students doing internships right now, doing those remote opportunities. Um, and then in terms of the job market, um, there are lots of things that we're coaching students to do during this time to engage with employers in a new way. And so while that in-person, uh, you know, hands across the table handshake opportunity is not quite there anymore, um, at this time at least, there are lots of things students can do to um, increase or improve their virtual presence, the networking that they're doing, um, buffing up their LinkedIn, reaching out to alumni and reaching out to employers and starting to make those connections um, and really take this as an opportunity to expand their network and expand their skills. So a lot of what we've been promoting, especially to our recent grads is go and build your skills. Use this time where maybe the job market isn't as strong in your field as you'd like it to be to really make yourself a marketable candidate. And that's where resources like LinkedIn Learning and some of the other free resources students can find are really helpful too. I'm just thinking, and you're obviously much more qualified in this area than I am, but when you think of this time, you think of outreach to employers, uh, usually it's hard to grab 15 minutes. You're trying to get that coffee, that lunch, et cetera. Not that companies aren't busy, but it almost seems like a great time to ask for a 15 minute conversation to get advice and to start to build that relationship, even if it can't be uh, in person. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I would also say some of the the barriers to setting up those types of conversations aren't there, right? So you don't need to be in the same location and find a time and find, you know, the right Starbucks to meet in. <laughs> now it's as simple as like, is there, are there 15 minutes on your calendar, you know, that I can grab and, and 
I think people have gotten so much more comfortable with this kind of virtual interaction. I know I have over the course of the last three or four months um, that they're more willing to have those conversations. Um, it seems a little less uncomfortable than it used to or less awkward than it used to. So I think that that's definitely one of those advantages that we can all kind of, you know, latch on to for this time period in terms of like the job search. And I would imagine employers have to be empathetic to the challenges, particularly in this class of 2020, the adjustment to virtual learning and now obviously finding a job. But at the same time, there's a very marketable quality for the students of resilience. Absolutely. I think, you know, oftentimes you get asked that question in an interview, right? Like, when's the time that you faced a challenge? And like, what did you do to meet that challenge? And like, boy, do we all have an example now that we can use for that question. But I, I do think you're right. I think it's a demonstration of resilience. And I think for those students that are able to say too, like, you know, my opportunities may have changed, but this is what I did with that time, right? Like I networked, I built up my resume, I sought out career advice. I really, um, I built some skills, right? I added these things to my resume. That, that's a great thing to be able to do. And, and I think we're all conscious too, like this is not an easy situation, right? And so I think there's a lot of pressure out there to like make the most of this time and like this time is hard. So we're, I think we all have to have empathy to that. And I think employers will too. Um, but it, there, there are um, real opportunities here to, to take advantage of the time to, to build skills and make those connections. It's a great point you make. It's not, obviously, there's the mechanics of building a good resume and LinkedIn and those sorts of things, but finding a job or an internship is stressful to begin with, especially if it's taking classes. How do you keep um, students with a positive attitude or reinforce the importance of that in what are very challenging and unprecedented times? Yeah, we've tried to do that in a couple of different ways. I think it's been helpful to offer some events um, where students can hear directly from employers. And, and we did a, a panel um, early in this whole pandemic, I think it was late March or late April, excuse me. And we had some employers who work in, you know, hiring and recruiting at some pretty large organizations, um, sharing kind of their perspective on this. And it was definitely aligned with, you know, similar to what I just said, that there's an understanding too, that this is a crisis. and. Mm -hmm it is a challenging time and I think employers definitely get that and you know we've had students reach out with concerns about this gap right like if they don't have that employment right away that there is the gap and I don't think there is concern from employers and that but there's there's an understanding right there's some perspective on that I think too it, it helps to hear the stories of other of recent grads so we've we've launched a series um, using Instagram Live this summer, spring and summer um, all-ins. They're alumni live lunch interviews. Uh, and so we've had some of our more recent alums uh, just having some short kind of Q&A conversations similar to what we're doing, talking about that transition to the first job, you know, what they did uh, in order to find that opportunity to gain employment. And their stories are not like, I had a job in September and it was great and I was ready to go in May, right? Like there's some really great advice um, from some recent grads. And I think that's very accessible to students too, to listen to those conversations because it's someone who just went through that job market. Um, I also think there's a lot of great resources out there um, in terms of like, you know, how do you find the employers that are hiring right now? What industries are hiring? And we've tried to make those resources available. So if you go to our website right now, you'll see one of the first kind of blocks that students can click on is COVID-19 resources. So we've been compiling a lot of information we're getting from employers, from different professional organizations, from um, even news articles uh, that tries to provide students with that perspective, with some tips and kind of places to go. Um, and it always depends on the student. And so we have some students that um, are able to, to kind of break it down into steps, right? And that, that really helps um, when we're working with students to say like, your goal at the end of this appointment is not to have a job. Like your goal is to polish your resume and then let's work on a cover letter and then let's find three opportunities. So I think it's, it's always a daunting task when you think I need a job, right? Um, but there are lots of little things you can do to get, to get on that path. Patience is hard. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, it's 21, but it's, it's certainly at that age, I was, yes, you know, you're chomping at the bit to, and, yeah. and feel all those external pressures. Um, but you guys haven't been sitting idly by. Uh, tell me about this virtual job fair that you guys are planning come the fall. 
Yeah, so we want to make sure Binghamton students have access to all of the amazing employers that would typically come to campus in a virtual format. So um, on July 10th, or on, pardon me, on September 10th, um, the day that we were planning to host our in-person job and internship fair, we will be hosting a virtual job and internship fair. We also, we already have many employers signed up. Students will have the opportunity to engage in both Kind of group sessions as well as one-on-one -on -one sessions with employers um, from an array of organizations just like we would normally have. Um, we think it's going to be a great opportunity for students to make those connections with employers. We also hope to broaden the array of employers that are at the fair because they don't need to travel here to uh, attend the fair. So again, like that small silver lining, right, uh, in this whole situation is that we um, are hoping to kind of expand the employers that are at that at that fair so students can make those connections. So we'll be hosting workshops to help students prep for what that fair would look like, sending out as much information as we can ahead of time so that students are comfortable using the platform. It'll be in Handshake, which is the uh, Hire Bing by Handshake system we use to post all our job and internship opportunities. So it'll be a platform students are familiar with, which is great. Um, and we'll provide as much um, information and resources ahead of time so students feel confident about um, having those conversations. And is it something they just know how to sign up for or they're going to get emails on or? Oh, they're going to get emails. So definitely, <laughs> email. yeah, emails. Yeah. Um, we're very active on Instagram. So if you're, um, if you don't follow us, I would definitely recommend doing that. We try to share a lot of good information and some educational programs through Instagram as well. Um, but we'll definitely be sharing information with students about that. And you're talking about silver linings. You guys have had some success with employers and connecting with them in Silicon Valley and Washington, D.C., right? Yeah. So we typically offer in-person employer treks to both of those cities through the Connect program. So Connect D.C. and Connect Silicon Valley were scheduled to happen in the spring. Um, we quickly uh, worked with our partner career offices on campus to transition those events to a virtual format. Um, and just what will like what will hopefully happen with the job and internship fair, we were able to expand some of the employer offerings for Silicon Valley and we had more students participate because they didn't have to travel, you know, to California for those um, events. So it was a great opportunity for students to interact with employers and um, it'll be interesting to see what we're able to do with that format, you know, moving forward without the limitations of geography, right? Absolutely. And if students want to set up a meeting, um, in the meantime, they can go to the Fleischman website? Yeah, so students, all they have to do is log into their Hire Bing by Handshake account, um, which they have, every student has one, yep. and you can go right to the Career Center Resources tab and, and schedule an appointment to meet with any of our career consultants. We also have a lot of great resources, as I mentioned, on our website. So if students go to careertools.binghamton.edu, that'll take you to really kind of the student hub of information. Students can go in there and search for um, information based on career cluster. They can sign up for a career cluster and get regular updates about jobs and internships in those industries. Um, there's information in there for uh, student affinity groups as well. So if you identify as a student of color, as an international student, you can get resources that way too. Um, and there's lots of other great career information on that page, including that COVID-19 resource page I mentioned, as well as our career guide, which has great uh, examples of resumes, cover letters, interviewing tips, all of that in it as well. These are terrific resources. Lastly, Erica, one final piece of advice for students, and you know what, for their concerned parents and extended family. Uh, you know, I would say we're gonna get through this. There's so many lessons we can take from the students who graduated during the recession in 2008, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you go back to those alumni, uh, the majority are employed, they got into graduate school, they're successful. You know, I think it's having that patience and and taking the time, right, to do everything you need to do to be as marketable as possible. So build that network, make sure your resume is in good shape, practice your interviewing skills. There are things you can do so that when the opportunities in your field are really open, like, and there's lots of opportunities available again, that, that you're ready to go. Um, but I would also say, you know, don't let the situation we're in right now stop you. There, there will be hiring needs throughout all of this. There are certain fields, and you can find this information on our website that are really hiring right now. Um, so, so consider other options too. Um, think outside the box a little bit about the opportunities that might be available, but we're going to get through it too. You know, we'll, we'll be on the other side of this. Um, soon. It's hard to see that in the moment. I totally understand though. 
Well, Erica, Chris, you're helping us get through it. And thanks so much to you and your staff for the incredible and important work that you're doing. And uh, look forward to talking with you again in the near future. Thank you so much.